Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. You are here on the home of the slightly above average ship review. Today, got a review for you of the German Tier 7 Premium Battleship Odin. Uh, I am just going to say in advance, I think my build may cause a little bit of controversy. And Sorry, I just look at the stats and I decide how I'm going to build the ship. So we built the Odin for reload. I'm also using a Halloween commander, Henry Hyde. Um, so bear that in mind when you see unusual things like extra heals that shouldn't be there if I was using a different commander. All right, this destroyer helpfully put up a smoke screen so I couldn't see anything. I really appreciate that. But we're moving out in the Odin. Uh, the Odin, I think, is kind of a tweener. It's got torpedoes. It's got secondaries, but they aren't long range, in my opinion. It's got probably the very best unique camo in the game, in my opinion. And I want to say the guns are a little low caliber when I say that. Consider that the Kronstadt has 305 millimeter guns, and I believe the Odin has 305 millimeter guns. And the Kronstadt is a tier 8 cruiser, so that's where I get off saying the Odin has low caliber 4 tier guns. Alright, so we're here in the Odin. We're checking out Ignaz now on the enemy team. Gonna light him up with the front two turrets. I think he moved out of the third turret just in time. We don't really do a ton of damage there because I didn't anticipate his speed correctly. So we're trying to back up and do a little turning at the same time in order to get a more accurate salvo out there. And the more accurate salvo doesn't necessarily do any more damage. All right, Leg Fantask over here, dead in the water. We'll shoot to shoot to see if we can kill him. That's how it's done. <laughs> we did kill him. All right, good times. Um, but that was not the first kill of the game, so we were cheated out of my traditional opener, which is the first blood metal. Oh, well. All right. Moving back out in the Odin. Looking at the minimap. Uh, got a York over here, got the Gneisenau, now, maybe one other ship I'm not thinking of. Uh, of course, we totally missed both the York and the Gneisenau. now. Checking out my torpedo range, not having a lot going on there. So eventually we will get that reload and fire out at the Gneisenau now again. There, we finally do some meaningful damage. And that's good. And I just put it into neutral, and we're just going to hang out here and shoot. Got a really nice quick reload on this thing, as you can see. And so, uh, generally, we're just kind of chilling, doing our thing for the moment. The York is an annoyance. He is not a threat. The Gneisenau. an owl is a threat that's why we're focusing our fire on him right now all right don't really do a lot of damage there but we do get a cap reset i think he's turning in some respects do get that rear turret out there another cap defended flag but no big hit or anything front two turrets pretty good grouping but again no big damage just some cap defended flags all right, so now the, the Gneis now is no longer in view. We will shoot at the York at the water line. Somebody else is also shooting at me. Story of my life. At least in this game. Um, but it looks like they quit or whatever. Still trying to gauge where the Gneis now is at. Torpedoes would not reach him if we had an opportunity to shoot them. So we'll shoot again at the orc who's just kind of chilling out. Problem solved, sir. 
And that was an okay hit. Uh, would have been a lot better if we had Citadel him a bunch of times and dev struck him and killed him and then not have to worry about him anymore. He's going back behind the island, so we're just going to back off. And you notice here what you're seeing in the mini map is what happens so often in today's gameplay. Your team will totally back off and not really try to capture anything. Now, that's not totally true. One blue teammate is trying to capture the Bravo cap. But I'm not going to go venture into the Charlie cap and get shot at by three different ships. Because the destroyer that was over here with us got killed. And the ship behind me, I think, is a cruiser. And so I can't really expect him to do that either. So you see a lot of this uber passive gameplay lately where no one's trying to push a cap or whatever. I'm not trying to push the cap for good reason because I would be dead if I did that. Um, so you're just going to have to deal with that and figure out strategies. But Earth to Blue Team, you win domination matches by capturing and holding the cap circles. Now, if I can't capture Charlie because I'm down a ship, that doesn't mean you can't capture Bravo or Alpha. But I just don't think, um, you know, a lot of people do that. Lately. And you see this in other games, you know, when they remade Modern Warfare. I bought the first one. I was camping all over the place. And in the old Modern Warfare, you just couldn't do that. You would get destroyed. But those people are older. They don't play video games anymore. Meanwhile, I was complaining. We did get a Citadel hit on the York and took him out. Kill number two. All right, checking the Massachusetts. And we're going to spool up these big diesels and try to move into Charlie. Or at the very least, spot the guys now and kill him. Um, I am trying to do what I can do to get a base cap here for my team. I am very mindful of the Massachusetts out there. And so that's why we're turning away. I am going to put my tail towards the Massachusetts if he comes out. And I reserve the right to uh, change my mind, of course. But there's the Ganaz now. Uh, we took a pretty good shot there. I think that may have been a Citadel. So that's not good. And now he's hidden. I guess, behind one of these rocks. I think this map is called Islands of Ice. Yeah, dumb name. Alright, uh, we'll shoot at the Ganaza now. Don't do a whole ton of damage there. We'll launch a torpedo at the Ganaza now. We somehow managed to evade taking a ton of damage there. And the secondaries kick in. I believe we are going to turn and fire into the superstructure. And that was a pretty good hit. Disabled his turret. And I'm doing that so I'm anticipating launching torpedoes. And he has torpedoes, so I want to launch mine before he can launch his. So we launch ahead of the indicator. We're going to shoot into this bow plate and finish him off. <clears throat> so really just the act of turning forced him to turn in a way to make him vulnerable there. All right, Massachusetts is about dead. We are capturing Charlie, so this is good. And I see Baltimore out there. Or uh, Balmer, I think if you're from Balmer, you call it Balmer. But everybody else calls it Baltimore. And, uh, yeah, this is really boring, but we're just capturing the base. I like the Odin. I don't think the Odin's particularly strong, but I don't think it is weak either. Like the Sharn Horse, um, you can do a lot of different things. Doesn't have the secondary range, in my opinion, that other ships do. Although I did not build it for secondaries. <clears throat> so I wouldn't say it's an up-tiered version of the Sharn Horse, but again... Your mileage may vary. I would say it is like a like a light battleship, maybe kind of a tweener between a battle cruiser and a battleship, if there is such a thing. Um, but I think it has great potential simply because it's got those torpedoes and you can get the reload down really, really low. If you're top tier, you're cranking out shells every 16, 17, 18 seconds. And you can really put a lot of hurt on somebody, especially when you mix in those torpedoes for a ship who tries to get up close and hurt you. 
Here we punish the Baltimore and don't really take a ton of damage. Although we did get set on fire. Another salvo almost gets a little bit. Last two turrets and they don't do anything. We we're gonna damage con because we we're getting set on fire by somebody else. And I think these torpedoes are gonna take out the Baltimore and they do. All right, just 100 points short of 1K damage here. Um, really getting HE spammed. I would really like some spotting of some sort to be going on. And I guess I'm just wishfully thinking about that. Is I think we got a destroyer hiding his own smokescreen. One of the things that really bothers me because he's not trying to do anything to affect the outcome of the match right now. So why hide in a smokescreen? Capture a base, you know? Um, try to take out an enemy ship. Spot for your team. Hiding in a smokescreen outside the cap circle isn't doing anything for anybody. All right, shooting at the Suzuya out here. Nice Citadel hit. We do unlock that high caliber metal. Um, working on that reload here really quickly. Trying to gauge where he is going to be at. Full salvo. <laughs> Not as nice as the previous one, which is just two turrets. Shameful. All right, so that didn't work out very well. We're going to continue forward around the island here. Would really love some help from my teammates. I mean, in theory, we have more ships than they do. But you're about to see an epic uh, game throw here by the blue team. So just stay tuned for that. It's so much fun. Problem solved, sir. All right, so we got a base cap. This cruiser cut in front of me into the area. I... I can't tell you how much of a bad idea I think that is. The cruiser should let me spot the ships and spam from him at afar. We're getting the turrets around. So Z is at an angle. I aim very poorly and totally miss. Um, working on a reload here again. There is another ship out in the distance. <clears throat> Looks like the Suzy is turning, so we'll aim to where he is turning to. And do not finish him off. Um, but he is eventually finished off by one of my teammates. I think the other cruiser. Shooting at the Bismarck. Now we're at a disadvantage here. So it just is what it is. Just trying to move in and do some damage here. No problem doing damage in the Odin. We're at 134,000 and change. Unfortunately, I did not steer the right way. I think we're going to catch one torpedo here. Oh my god, I don't know how we missed that. All right, still on fire. Didn't want to use the damage con unless I really needed to. So it's a three on one. This should be an easy win for our team. We've got two of the three caps. We are down by points, but that shouldn't matter at this point. Um, because all one of these ships has to do is run away. And in theory, we could outpoint the Bismarck. All right, never mind. Scratch all that. I see that there's like a minute left. We're not going to outpoint the Bismarck. So they've got to kill the Bismarck. You got to light the Bismarck on fire. You got to use torpedoes. You got to go all in. And uh, I'm not sure my teammates are doing that. Anyway, uh, we get finished off by the Bismarck there. Um, these torpedoes are going to fall short, unfortunately. And so, under a minute left, you should realize you have to kill the Bismarck. Now, here's the thing. One of these cruisers could ram the Bismarck and probably kill him at this point or get close enough to use torpedoes, but that's just not going to happen. These guys are going to ineffectively flail away at the Bismarck and not commit to killing him. I mean, those torpedoes helped, um, but they aren't what 
you need. This guy needs to go ram him. He needs to just launch the torpedoes and then drive straight at the Bismarck. And, you know, time runs out. I just wish I'd seen more commitment there from my teammates to killing the Bismarck. Anyway, high caliber medal. And uh, we finished at the top of the board. 1922, three big kills. You know, it's a lot of cash. Um, but at the end of the day, we lost. And I could read all this stuff off to you, but I think I was so disappointed I just went back into another match. Anyway, we're going to go into the port here and take a look at the ship, honest, despite this loading screen. Um, oh, I think the loading screen was because I got kicked out. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we are uh, in the port. I, I forgot. I had to add the Odin uh, port scene later. All right, we went with aiming systems mod one. Damage control system mod two. Concealment system mod one. And main battery mod three. Terms of the loadout, four charges of the repair party, four charges of the catapult fighter. You could swap out for those other ones. And two charges of sonar for ships that is five kilometers. We're using all the epic flags and the rare battle booster for movement speed and cooldown reduction. Got this Nordic permanent camouflage, which I really like, and the legendary birthday 21 flag. 68,700 hit points and a 22% torpedo damage reduction with our build. Main battery, 3x3, 305 millimeter turrets, 18.2 kilometer firing range, 16.6 .6 second reload, 34.5 second turn time. HE shells, 3,600 damage with a 27% fire chance. Armor piercing shells, 9,400 damage. Two sets of secondaries to range on both, just 5.2 kilometers. First set of 6x2 128s reloads every 3.6 seconds. 1500 HE shell damage with a 5% fire chance. Second set of 2x3 150s reloads every 7.5 seconds. 1700 HE shell damage with an 8% fire chance. Moving on to the torpedoes, which we used but didn't get hits, I don't think. Two quad launchers, reload every 90 seconds, max damage 13,700, six kilometer range at 64 knots, the detectability is 1,300 meters. AA defense, you can see uh, your first set of secondaries is dual purpose, does count as AA, however, overall low damage per second, not very long ranging, and I think this isn't great A for the deer. Um, I think there's a good possibility you could be neutralized very easily by a skilled carrier commander. Max speed 30.9 knots, 790 meter turning circle, 14.8 rudder shift time. All that stuff looks pretty good. 13.1 concealment on the surface, 11 from the air, 11.9 when firing in smoke. When it comes to other disappointing stuff, it's right here in the armor viewer. All right, you've got a non-turtle back, waterline citadel, little bit of a heavy plate at the front and rear of the citadel, little bit heavier roof armor there. You do have a armor belt of 60 millimeters that goes all the way to the front of the bow. The plating above and below that is 32 millimeters. Got a really minuscule 245 millimeter armor belt below the waterline and 32 millimeter torpedo plating down to the keel of the ship. Here's what's really disappointing. Barbettes, a little bit more heavily armored, but for the tier, not at all. Turret roofs, um, not heavily armored at all. This is really similar to the Bismarck's turrets and they will get knocked out. Put the casemate back on. You can see the armor plate of 320 up the side and 45 millimeters above that, but that's just going to catch on fire, you know. Um, and again, that's the armor profile, the Odin. Kind of not so great. 
So here's our commander, Henry Hyde, have him at 15 and 2. Um, in terms of our inspirations, went with Billy Sims and D. Ravel. I only use Hyde on this ship so far. Um, base trait increases the hit points, so that ties in with Sims as an inspiration. We're using Flammable Cannoneer, Unique Skill Alley Dad, which increases the ricochet angle of the armor piercing shells. That helps because those low caliber main battery. Um, marksmanship and uh, Master Mechanic, and of course, fight Fire with Fire. Anyway, that's the Odin. Sorry about the choppy video. <laughs> I'll see you next time, everybody.